Okay. Um, Judge Wong, I, I believe everyone is back and we can um, turn it back over to you. All righty, thank you. Madam Court Reporter, are you ready? I'm ready, thank you. Thank you. All right, so uh, I'll call the matter of Carlos Van Darrell Seals. Um, so let's go ahead and go back on the record. Uh, we are on the record before the Board of Chiropractic Examiners, Department of Consumer Affairs, State of California, in the matter of the petition for reinstatement of voked, uh, excuse me, revoked license by Carlos Van Darrell, spelled capital V-A-N, capital D-A-R-R-E-L-L, -L, SEALS, S-E-A-L-S. It is agency case number AC. 2017-1133 and OAH number 2022-090-786. My name's Corin Wong. I'm an administrative law judge with the Office of Administrative Hearings, and I've been assigned to preside over this matter. Uh, to establish a quorum of the board for the record, I request that each member respond audibly after his or her name is called. Dr. Paris? Present. Dr. Adams. Present. Mr. Sweet. Present. Ms. Cruz. Present. Dr. Daniels. Present. Let the record reflect that a quorum of the board is present. Uh, next, if I may have counsel state their appearances for the record, starting with the Deputy Attorney General. Thank you, Your Honor. This is Deputy Attorney General Jeff Stone appearing um, pursuant to government code section 11522 on behalf of the people of the state of California. James Cosnett for petitioner Carlos Seals. Good afternoon, your honor, members okay. of the board and council. All right, Mr. Cosnett, were you here um, earlier when I talked about the procedural um, Posture of the uh, pet uh, of petition hearings. Yes, your honor. Okay, and do you have any questions about that process? No, your honor. All right, very good. Um, Mr. Stone, if you'd like to present your documents or summary statement, whichever you'd like to do first. Thank you. Uh, going over the documents, we do have the uh, notice of hearing and declaration of service, setting the uh, hearing for this date, time, and place. Um, we have the petitioner's application for reinstatement of revoked license and attachments. Those are uh, bait stamped BCE 1 through 107. And we have the certified copies of petitioner's prior disciplinary documents uh, on file with the board. Those are at uh, BCE 108 through 209. There is also um, a memorandum dated October 12, 2022, as well as a continuing education log uh, prepared by the board staff. And those are the documents that we have in relation to the petition hearing. Thank you, Mr. Stone. I'll go ahead and mark the request to set as exhibit one. Um, exhibit two will include the October 12th, 2022 mem memorandum to the board, uh, continuing, <clears throat> excuse me, education log and petition for reinstatement of revoked license and supporting documents. Uh, exhibit three will consist of the order of decision, proposed decision, and accusation and petition to revoke probation. Exhibit four will consist of the decision and order, uh, decision, decision and order, another decision, and then a decision and order, um, another decision. Um, looks like there's Four more decisions, and then an accusation, a proposed decision, and then uh, lastly, a decision. And then last, Exhibit 5 will consist of the notice of hearing and a memorandum to Mr. Stone. Uh, first, Mr. Kosnett, any objection to Exhibit 1 and or 5 for jurisdictional purposes only? No objections, Your Honor. Great, thank you. Uh, those exhibits will be admitted for jurisdictional purposes only. And then, Mr. Kosnett, um, any objection to exhibits two, three, and or four for all purposes? No objections, Your Honor. Thank you. And those exhibits will be admitted for all purposes. Um, Mr. Stone, whenever you're ready with your summary. 
Uh, thank you, Ronner. Um, the board issued the doctor of chiropractic license uh, number DC 16052 to petitioner on or about July 19th, 1984. Uh, the license was revoked effective June 1st, 2001 in the case that you will see before you AC 2146. Uh, the license was reinstated uh, effective March 14th, 2014. Uh, and then uh, revoked effective November 23rd, 2018. So what we have is um, um, an initial uh, initial uh, case for discipline. That's the uh, uh, case number uh, 2146 uh, with the effective date of June 1st, 2001. Uh, in that case, uh, petitioner was subject to discipline in relation to relation to a felony conviction based on his guilty plea uh, in 1999, um, essentially regarding um, kickbacks or payments for referral fees by attorneys um, in relation to his uh, chiropractic practice. Um, he uh, was ordered, it believes, I believe in that criminal case, six months in a halfway house 400 uh, hours of community service and uh, to pay uh, on the money that he earned an, approximately $90,000 uh, in taxes. Then um, a petitioner abroad, and you'll see these in, in, in the records, a number of uh, petitions uh, to be reinstated, I believe about five um, in 2005, 2007, 2008, 2010, and 2012. And then um, he was uh, uh, reinstated. Uh, and um, after that reinstatement, uh, which was effective, I believe, 2000, March 14, 2014, he was placed on probation for five years. Um, and then uh, on or about July 10th of 2017, uh, an accusation and petition to revoke probation was filed against petitioner. And that's case number AC 2017-1133. And there was an administrative hearing on that, and the license was revoked uh, effective November 23rd, 2018. Um, that case uh, essentially um, involved uh, a few causes for discipline. Uh, the first, uh, failing to practice chiropractic by acting beyond the, co the scope of chiropractic practice and the, beyond the scope of his license uh, when he diagnosed or analyzed a person for a weight loss program. Uh, he engaged in an extreme departure from the standard of care, repeated negligent acts, incompetence, endangering public health, dishonesty, fraud, and misrepresentation, and failure to provide informed consent when using or permitting to use uh, of a uh, ZYTO scan, that's Z-Y-T-O scan, S-C-A-N, device on a person uh, to diagnose them, also failing to uh, file sub-office address information with the board, uh, and failing to purchase or display a satellite office certificate. Um, and then uh, as a result of uh, that accusation, uh, the causes for discipline, as well as the causes for revocation, uh, respondent's uh, license was uh, once again uh, revoked, uh, which um, brings us uh, to this uh, instant uh, petition Regarding continuing education, uh, the petitioner has provided evidence of sufficient continuing education to fulfill the continuing education requirements for each year that his license was re revoked. Essentially, that's 96 hours of continuing education, including eight hours of ethics and law and 16 hours of mandatory subject areas. And um, in this case, I do not have um, information um, regarding costs, although I do see in the prior case that there was approximately $19,991 uh, in costs awarded uh, in the 2017 case. And that is the uh, summary of information on this case today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Kosnett, do you have any additional documents you wanted to introduce? No additional documents, Your Honor. Okay, and did you have any witnesses um, other than Mr. Seals? No, Your Honor. And do you wish to give an opening statement? Thank you. 
Um, members of the board, your honor, council, uh, Mr. Steele stands before you, a humble chastened man. He greatly enjoyed his chiropractic practice. He helped a lot of people, but he made a lot of mistakes and he has learned from those mistakes. He is remorseful, repentant, rehabilitated. He spent a lot of time looking into himself, examining what he did wrong, and he's determined to give back to society and to contribute in the best way he knows how, which is to be a chiropractor. He's never lost his love or his passion for chiropractic. He's continued to stay abreast of all the developments in the field and his knowledge is sharp and current. Uh, he has continued to help people through his businesses, as the evidence will show, his landscaping and his religious service to people and his service to just to their meaty, meditative and peace of mind and so forth. And, uh, and whatever help he can legally give, he's continued to attempt to give and he is ready and fit to return to service as a chiropractor. He will not endanger the public and he will be an asset and a benefit to our community. Thank you. Thank you. Do you wish to call Mr. Seals at this time? I do. All right, Mr. Seals, if I could have you uh, raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm under penalty of perjury that the testimony you will provide in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. You may put your hand down. Um, if I could have you start by stating and spelling your full name for the record, please. First name is Carlos, C-A-R-L-O-S. Middle name is Van Durell, V-A-N-D-A-R-R-E-L-L. -L. Last name is Seals, S-E-A-L-S. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Cosnet, whenever you're ready. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Seals. Um, can you tell uh, the board where you live? Yes, I live in uh, Menifee, California. And can you tell them a little bit about your family just to give them a little context of your, your home life? Well, presently, um, I'm married, of course. I, uh, <clears throat> I have eight kids, uh, no longer in the house. Now I'm, I'm a foster parent. We have five foster kids in the house. Um, and all is good. Okay. Let's give them a little look at your professional life by turning to your CV, which starts at page 62 of the packet that we're all working from the same packet. Um, it, um, your employment, um, you list a chiropractic assistant from 2018 to present. What, describe that please. Uh, yeah, a chiropractic assistant for Dr. Aguilera in Fontana. Well, you, up until- yeah, Tell um, a little bit about your duties, your, your, lot, your work there, just a bit, and because we have a lot to cover. Okay, uh, pretty much it's just back office work, yeah. Uh, All right. I do, then, I do therapy. Alternative care practitioner, 2001 to present. Please describe. Well, that's, uh, that includes my ministry, counseling, um, <clears throat> as far as um, treatments on patients, I do Reiki, you know, so energy work. That's Religious it. science minister at the New Vision Center, 2001 to present. Yeah, that's... Uh, that's what I was ordained to um, religious science, which now is called Center for Spiritual Living. I uh, was giving uh, weekly services. Now I uh, I give them monthly. First Sunday of each month, we have our services. Uh, I continue to provide uh, Tai Chi and meditation courses during the week. 
and um, on Sundays. And so that's where I'm at right now. All right, and then finally, your landscaping business, New Vision Landscaping Company, branch ministry to help individuals that were in need of a second chance after incarceration, 2005 to the present. Please describe. Okay, yeah, my landscaping business is a direct um, outshoot of my ministry. And um, basically, I only hired uh, people who need that second chance that have been incarcerated and um, give them that second chance and see how they do and go from there. All right. Now, um, you listed your education. Um, can you, um, uh, um, I don't think that we need to um, go over that. I don't think that's an issue uh, anywhere. Anything you'd like to highlight there before we move on? No, there's nothing to highlight. All right. So now let's turn to um, the, uh, uh, the case in which you recently lost your license. You had been under probation, correct? Yes. All right. And what were you under probation for? I had previously uh, lost my license um, in 2001, June of 2001, uh, because of kickbacks. And uh, when they reinstated my license, I was on probation for five years. I think I got through three and a half before this happened to me. And then um, that's where we stand. All right. Now, you, um, this arose, um, uh, well, primarily through your association with another chiropractor for whom you worked as an independent contractor, correct? Yes, I was working for someone. Who was, who was that? Dr. Cynthia Binkert. All right, and and you were in her office as an independent chiro as an independent contractor, correct? Yes. And um, you were involved in weight loss activity. At some point, she did start doing weight loss. Yes. I'm talking about you. You were involved in it, weren't you? Oh, oh yeah, I, I was involved in it. And and that was that was wrongful activity, was it not? It was definitely wrong. And then you were also involved with a device called the Zytoscan, correct? That too, yes, I was. And that was found to be an extreme departure uh, from, the, from, from the standard of care and from the practice of chiropractic medicine. Is that not correct? That's true. And you agree with that finding? Yes, I do. And that involved fraud and misrepresentation and 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 treatment of a patient without their legal proper consent. Yes. All right. Now, in addition to your work with uh, uh, former Dr. Benkert, you also had your own office, your own chiropractic um, uh, office. Did you not in a different location completely? Yes. All right, and in that location, you did not give that, you did not properly, properly report that address to the board. Am I correct? No, where I practice, it was reported. The two, they were. Um, where was the satellite office that you failed to report? Uh, Costa Mesa. All right, so you had several offices. Yes. And on one of them, you failed to report the proper address, correct? Yes. All right. And you also failed to obtain and display the appropriate certificate at that office, did you That's not? That's correct. That's All correct. All right. All right. And as a result of this, you lost your license. It was revoked, was it not? Yes, it was. All right. And. Uh, nevertheless, uh, during the time your license was revoked, you continued to study chiropractic medicine, did you not? I continued uh, going to seminars and things, conventions. Yes, I did. And you took courses? I took courses. 
I continuing agree. education. Continuing education and certification courses. All right, and that's all reflected in the exhibits uh, 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 that the board, I'm sure, will uh, look at or make note of. Uh, uh, and they're all true and correct copies from, um, it looks like here, uh, from page 73, uh, exhibit D on down to, uh, oh, down to, Down to page 107, am I correct? Yes, I see that. All right. And um, uh, also, you wrote a book uh, for the, uh, uh, a, a, uh, that we reproduced in, as an exhibit. To tell a little bit about that. Not, not a long time, but just, just describe it briefly, please. Yeah, uh, during, the, during that period that um, I was on, had lost my license, I um, decided to write a book. Uh, 52 lessons, 52 sermons to live by. And um, in writing those lessons, it was, um, it was um, rehabilitative for me. Um, it uh, uh, helped me to remind myself why I do what I do. And um, it was, I'm having a great experience with that. I've had a few uh, sinners say they want to use the book to teach classes. I would like to take the liberty of calling the panel's attention, page 70, which is a page from Mr. Seal's book in which he quotes Henry David Thoreau, a single footstep will not make a path on the earth. So a single thought will not make a pathway in the mind. To make a deep physical path, we walk again and again. To make a deep mental path, we must think over and over the kind of thoughts we wish to dominate our lives. Unquote. I, I, I think that's appropriate in the context of rehabilitation. Have you thought over and over about your life and the mistakes that you've made? Constantly. Constantly uh, reflecting. And what would you like to tell the board why they should give you the opportunity to return to practice? Well, first of all, I'd like to let them know that I accept responsibility for everything that has been reported. And Someone once said that nothing is stronger than a broke man rebuilding himself. Now, the first time I lost my license, I took it, you know, I took it like, quote unquote, a man. The second time I lost my license, which was definitely not intentional, um, I kind of weeped. I, for about two weeks, and then I got it up on my feet again, and I started up. I said, okay, I'm going to move through this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to try one more time. I think I'm, I'm ready to be reinstated. I've been ready to be reinstated because this is all I know. This is all I want to do, and I know that I'm good at what I'm doing. Chiropractic is my life. I did not get into chiropractic because of an illness or someone else that was ill. I got into chiropractic because of the innate intelligence philosophy that it taught. That's why I got into chiropractic. It was in alignment with my spiritual beliefs. I was studying to be a minister prior to that. And then I met someone who was a chiropractor and took me to the school. And I knew this was the way I needed to go. And so I did, I followed my dream. And I wanna to continue to follow that dream. I'm recognizing now that um, I'm 65 years old and not everybody, but I do. I'm recognizing my mortality and um, only got a few more years left to, to really do it right. And I wanna be able to do it right. 
I need this opportunity to get it right. You know, <clears throat> I failed my kids for 12 years. That was the first time. 12 years, I could not give them the lifestyle that I wanted to. And in my zest, in my zest to, to catch up when I got my license back, I made some wrong choices. I accepted employment at a place that I shouldn't accept employment. I promoted a, a weight loss program that was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. And so, um, but we learn through experience, but it comes a point where you wanna stop having those experiences. It comes a point where you gotta stop hitting your head against the brick wall and just live a decent life. And you want to be able to do that for the next 10 to 15 years. Very good. Thank you. No further questions. Mr. Stone, cross examination. Yes, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, going back to the, the, the first uh, time that your license uh, was revoked. Um, it involved essentially business practices. Um, and um, can you tell me uh, what, if anything, you learned from that first uh, revocation um, regarding being in the business of chiropractic uh, that um, uh, what, what you learned that, that you, you'd hoped uh, would prevent you from getting trouble regarding business practices in the future? Well, I learned, first of all, <clears throat> that we must always use discernment. You know, people are going to come and go. People are going to come into your experience as any profession. They're going to offer you this. They're going to offer you that. And you got to be able to uh, make decisions that are beneficial not only for the practice, but for your family. You know, because every decision that you make affects someone else. And so discernment is very important um, that I have come to understand over this long period of time of being without my license for the first time that that happened. And then the second time, which really broke me, it devastated me the second time. So, um, you can never be too careful, but you got to be mindful. You got to be watchful, and um, you got to research when you get in. When you, when you, I mean, I'm the type of person I like new technology. I like giving my patients the best, but there's a lot of stuff out there that is just not right, and you got to research it, and then you have to make your decision as to how you want to implement it or not implement it. Thank you. When you when you got your license back um, last time, you uh, went back into the to the business uh, of uh, chiropractic, uh, and your uh, business model at that time related to a weight loss a, a weight loss program, the Nutrimost program, and the Zyto Scan uh, printout, and um, that business model uh, again. Uh, got you in trouble. Uh, can you tell me why last time when you got your business license back, you went into um, a business that you could say was unrelated or maybe tangential to uh, the work of a doctor of chiropractic uh, in terms of your the, the weight loss business um, scheme that you were involved in? Well, I was wrong. And I ask for your forgiveness. I was wrong to get involved with Nutrimos. Well, it, it appears when you practiced initially, and then when you practiced again, that uh, you were involved in uh, business endeavors that um, were uh, different from or expanded upon or strayed from the traditional uh, uh, adjustments in practice, um, uh, physical, 
physical practices uh, in relation to chiropractic. And can you tell me uh, why you practiced that way in the past um, and how you would anticipate practicing in the future? Well, first of all, I don't plan on doing weight loss ever again. <clears throat> um, and I don't plan on um, bringing uh, new modalities that are coming out on the market that are actually just gimmicks to bring patients into the office. I've learned this uh, over time that a lot of the stuff that's being promoted out there, it's just a gimmick to get more patients into the office. I don't want to be a part of that. I'm a, I, I want to go straight back to straight chiropractic, the way I practice in Fontana, was practicing in Fontana before I started working uh, in the offices in uh, Costa Mesa. I've I learned a lot about these um, <clears throat> these scams that are going on out there. And uh, that's just not who I am as a person. I counsel people every day. And um, <clears throat> and um, it's it's interesting that just like them, even myself, we find ourselves in situations sometimes that we don't intentionally want to be there, but we got there. And a lot of that has to do with um, not taking the time to um, to analyze what's actually happening around us and the individuals that are actually coming into our experience. Now, when you uh, got your license back last time when you were reinstated, um, did you uh, perform traditional chiropractic adjustments on patients in Wait, addition to the weight loss program? Repeat that latter part of the question. Yeah, you uh, you you were uh, your license was revoked and then you got it back. Yes. And when you got it back, you got in trouble again with the weight loss program. But I was wondering if when you got it back, even though you were involved in a weight loss program, did you also uh, perform traditional chiropractic chiropractic adjustments on patients too? Yeah, in my Fontana office, I provided chiropractic adjustments. In the uh, in the clinic in Costa Mesa, I did not. And if you were to get your license back, what would be your anticipated scope of practice uh, in the future? My anticipated practice is actually to be a cash practice and to practice in Fontana only and not seek out. Um, I'm at an age now that I don't really want to. I don't want multiple clinics anymore, work in multiple clinics anymore. I just want one place. 20 hours a week, and that's it. I'm not looking to, um, it's too late to, to really build. So I'm not looking to build, I'm just looking to do what I love. And what is that? Chiropractic. Helping people heal, helping people get better. Um, now, uh, is there any reason why, um, we don't have any letters of references from former patients of yours or other chiropractors that you've worked with. Uh, is there any reason why we don't have that type of information? Uh, I didn't think that it was necessary because I had already given that in my initial, um, <clears throat> in the initial, um, what, what was that that we did, Dr. Kosek? In the initial complaint of the second, I gave all that information. I had um, and the defense and the, to the to the accusation. Right, we had uh, witnesses. We had letters, so I didn't feel it was necessary a second time, and um, that's why I don't have any. Um, I don't have anything further. Thank you very much, Mr. Cosnet. Anything further on redirect? No, Your Honor. All right, I'll check to see if there's any questions from the board. Uh, Dr. Paris. I do. I have a, um, just a couple questions. Uh, 
Hi, Mr. Seals. Uh, welcome and, and thank you for your rehabilitative efforts to date. And, uh, and thank you, Dr. Your Karen. And your testimony today. Um, I, I want to ask you, are you still part of the pastoral medical association? No, no, I'm not a part of that. And, um, no, I'm not a part of it. And, uh, I'm wondering when, when you, um, initially were utilizing the Zyto scan were as far as the FDA approval goes, um, it was that, are you aware of a 510 K approval for the FDA? Versus other approvals? No, I'm not. I'm not aware of any approval. And um, subsequently, that FDA approval that they have, that they say they have, I don't think it was from the United States. I think it was from China or something like that. I'm not sure. But I recognize after looking at it again, it wasn't the United States FDA. It was someone, someone else's FDA. And it was in small print, so I didn't see that at first. I will say that those types, um, the nuances of FDA approvals and understanding the devices that you may engage in using are, are very important for you to understand. Um, so uh, I would have liked to have heard some clarity um, on your part there, especially considering the situation you're in because of that device. Um, e I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm listening. Um, I, I have I have no further question. Thank you, Doctor Adams. Any questions? Yes. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Seals. Thank you for your time and your testimony and for your efforts thus far. Um, you had mentioned in your uh, questioning by your attorney uh, that you we're doing I, uh, Reiki work. That's a form of, of uh, healing arts, correct? Energy work, yes. Energy work. Um, do you have a certification in Reiki? Yes. So, so you have a current, and you went to, do you have to go to massage school or is that a separate school for Reiki? Uh, it's just a certification program. Uh, how long does that, does that program take to get certification? Um, four weeks, something like that. And, and it's, not, it's a, just it's a weekend course, you know, it's, 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 it's nothing complicated. And, and do you keep, do, is that a license or a certification you have to keep current by, by continuing education? No. Just, just a one-time thing? Um, to get the, the certificate, but you keep going just to, you know, like anything else, you want to continue to get better at your energy work. Yeah, and, and then you said you're doing back office work to at a chiropractic office. Is that correct? I was. I'm not now. I was doing no um, back office work. No how long? How long has it been since you did the back office work? Um, a year. A year. Okay. And why? Why did you terminate that relationship? The doctor was going through a divorce and he was closing the clinic. Okay. Um, when you were working with uh, Dr. Ben Kirk, were you aware that she had an inactive license? Yeah, she had told me that um, she she uh, it was inactive. Yeah, because she wanted to just do the neutral mode. So she yeah she said that she called in and. She All right, I'm sorry, sir. I can't hear you. She told me she wanted to just do neutral mode, just the weight loss. So she made her DC license inactive. And my other questions were answered. So I thank you for your time. Thank you. Mr. Sweet, any questions? Yeah, just uh, briefly, um, you mentioned wanting to get back into just pure chiropractic practice. Um, Can you speak up a little bit, please? Sure. You yeah. mentioned that you wanted to get back to just pure chiropractic practice. Is that right? Yes. 
do you have a plan for where that would where that would happen or with another practice or do you plan on opening your own practice well i plan on having my own practice again and uh, it will be in fontana that's where i that's where i like being in fontana <laughs> and that's where i'm gonna stay yeah do you have any um, other people that you would be practicing with? No, I don't want to practice with anybody no more. I want to be solo. Okay, I don't. I don't have any other questions. Thank you, Ms. Cruz. Any questions? Uh, aside from looking toward a cash practice, what other kind of safeguards do you see putting in place? um so that you wouldn't kind of consider other kind of potential ventures uh kind of related to for example kind of the uh pat the passive kickbacks or the past of kind of getting into kind of some forms of alternative care like would it be a support system like what what are things that you would put in place and ensure whether they're in place today or kind of put in place in the future i'm not quite understanding your question but um if, are you asking me about income not so much it's more of like how 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 do you what what safeguards do you see yourself putting in place to i want i guess the best word to say is to not stray to not expand the scope of care as you've done before yeah. well the best safeguard is my own thinking my own thinking process that's the best safeguard <clears throat> and through life experiences um, I can say that, um, I'm a little wiser now, you know, and I say little because there's always room to improve. Uh, I know when to say no, I know how to say no, and I don't regret saying no. So, um, I, I'm not, uh, sitting in a, in a bubble thinking that nobody's going to come into my office or, or uh, people are not going to be trying to run little gimmicks on me again, you know, but I am smart enough to know I can say no. Thank you. No other questions. Dr. Daniels, any questions? Questions? Yes. Hi. Hi, Mr. Seals. Hello, um, Dr. Daniel. Daniel. I um, was wondering if you could just elaborate a little bit more for me on your understanding of what exactly you did wrong in your opening, one of your opening statements, you said you made it three and a half years until this happened to me. Um, and I think my point of view is it didn't happen to you. You had a choice. So I was just wondering if you could elaborate a little bit more on why exactly you feel your license was revoked and what specifically you did wrong. Okay, the reason I say happened to me happened to me is because that's when I started working at Ben Curtis. Ben Curtis. Um, I lost my license because I participated in something that was not right. It was wrong for me to use the Dido scan. It was wrong for me to even practice neutral modes. It was just wrong. And once again, I ask for your forgiveness. But that was a learning experience. And I mean, that kind of sounds cliche. We gotta we gotta hit our heads and stuff like that to learn. But um I was excited to learn something new. I had just, you know, three years back into my license. This new thing comes out. Um, someone offers me to work in their office. And they were going to pay me to work in their office. I, I was on, I was on board at that time, you know, but, uh, in looking back, like I said earlier, we can't just jump on board anymore. We have to analyze everything we do because everything we do affects someone else. Once again, my family was affected 
by my stupidity. So, um, yes, I was wrong yeah. for uh, promoting that Zyto scan. Okay, thank you. Um, I I think it said on your CV that you were a licensed naturopathic physician. Yeah, I have a, yeah. I have a certification as a naturopath. Okay, but you're not licensed with the naturopathic board. No certification. It's there, didn't it say certification on there? That's okay. I couldn't find it, but uh, you answered the question. Uh, just one final uh, question. So, um, why did you look for other modalities besides chiropractic to begin with? Why did you um, stray, say, from your uh, your love of chiropractic in Fontana and look for these other clinics and other sort of uh, opportunities? Was the chiropractic you were doing not enough for you, or? Well, the, my practice in Fontana was very slow. My wife was working for this chiropractor in Norco, and they had brought in this new program, Nutrimos, and they needed help in um, <clears throat> selling the product. And um, I told her that I, I'd be willing to help. And um, and so I did. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your time. No more questions. You're welcome. All right, I think that's each of the board members, but I'll check to see if anyone has, else has thought of any subsequent questions. Uh, any further questions from the board? All right, hearing none, Mr. Seals, thank you very much for your testimony. Uh, you're excused as a witness. And may, I, uh, may I have a, a very brief uh, redirect? Uh, yes, go ahead. Um, there was a request for clarification on this point. So, in case it wasn't clarified, I'd like to ask you: Did you are, are you are you uh, will you confirm to the board that you, if you're given the opportunity, you're going to stick to making adjustments and not deal with? Devices, whether approved by the FDA or not. Uh, that's correct. I'm 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 done with um, outside uh, devices. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Seals, your excuse. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kuznet. Do you rest? I do. All right, uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Stone, do you wish to give a closing? Uh, no, thank you. Nothing further, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Kosnett, your closing. Well, Your Honor, I, I'd just like to uh, uh, reminisce here that uh, rehabilitation is a qualitative determination, not quantitative, and it's evaluated on a person's internal attitudinal scale. I think that the state of mind of this person is clear that he he's done wrong things, but he's clearly rehabilitated. He's clearly repentant, remorseful, and he understands he's learned a lot. You learn more from your mistakes sometimes than from your successes. And the state of mind demonstrating rehabilitation is one that has a mature, measured appreciation of the gravity of the misconduct and remorse for the harm caused. And that's what the board I submit has seen today. Rehabilitation is a state of mind, as it's stated in the matter of Brown. He's conducted himself straightforwardly ever since the mishap that cost him his license. And I believe that the community would be well served by giving him an opportunity to return to his intended path of using his chiropractic skill to make adjustments 
and help people and make their lives better in the few years that he has left. I think that the man has an appreciation of the finiteness of life, a regret for the years that he has lost his privilege of doing what he knows best, what he does best, what he loves best. He's asking you to restore that privilege. I believe he will cherish it. In the few years that he's left, he's not going to do anything to jeopardize that. I believe the public will be well protected. And I would like you to return into practice on any terms and conditions that you feel are just and appropriate. And I know that he will comply fully with every one of those terms and conditions. And you will not regret it. Thank you. All right, so thank you very much. That concludes uh, this hearing. So the record's closed, the matter's submitted, and we are off the record. Um, so Mr. Kosnett, as you may have heard me tell the other petitioners um, and their counsel, the board will uh, deliberate in closed session about this matter after hearing the final petition matter, um, and then a decision will be issued um, at a later date. Uh, so a decision will not be issued um, today. And then um, my office will send you a copy of the court reporter form uh, tomorrow so you have one for your records. Thank you. All right, do you have any questions? None, Your Honor, I appreciate it. I thank you, I thank the board. I All thank right. the council. Thank you very much, have a great day. You too. Madam court reporter, if I could get a page estimate please when you're ready. Sure, it's uh, 43 pages. Thank you. And Dr. Paris, uh, does the board want to take a short break or shall we proceed to the final matter? I think we should proceed. All right. Um, Madam court reporter, are you ready or do you need a moment? I just need a moment to start a new file. Okay, and I'll open my files at the same time. Oh, and I guess one thing I want to check with board staff, if I could, before we started, um, I have 2 different. Agency case numbers for the final matter, um, Andrea Bradshaw matter. Um, I have 2000 or yeah, 2021-16319 as well as 2014-999. The correct number is 2014999. Great, thank you. All right, I'm ready, thank you. All right, so if we can go back on the record, we are on the record before the Board of Chiropractic Examiners, Department of Consumer Affairs, State of California, in the matter of the petition for reinstatement of surrendered license and reduction in penalty by Andrea Bradshaw. It is agency case number AC 2014-999, OAH number 2022-090-787. My name's Corin Wong. I'm an administrative law judge with the Office of Administrative Hearings, and I have been assigned to preside over this matter. Uh, to establish a quorum of the board for the record, I request that each member respond audibly after his or name his or her name is called. Uh, Dr. Paris. Present. Dr. Adams. Present. Mr. Sweet. Present. Ms. Cruz. Present. And Dr. Daniels. Present. Let the record reflect that a quorum is present. 
uh, quorum of the board is present. And next, may I take the appearance of the Deputy Attorney General? Thank you, Your Honor. This is Deputy Attorney General Jeff Stone, uh, appearing on behalf of the people of the state of California, uh, pursuant to Government Code Section 11522. Okay, and Ms. Bradshaw, I just wanted to confirm that you could hear me okay? Your microphone is currently okay. muted. Right. There you go. Thank you. Okay, and then um, did you want to use your camera? Okay. Is it okay? There we see you. It just shifted on me. I had to find you. All right. Thank you. Um, Ms. Bradshaw, were you present when I talked about the procedural um, posture of uh, the petition hearings? Yes. Okay. Did you have any questions about that process? Um, maybe could you, can you please recite it just quickly again, just sure. so I can make sure. Thank you. Sure. Um, so um, after we, uh, I go explain the process to you. I will ask Mr. Um, Stone for uh, to introduce the um, your petition and supporting documents, um, and then provide a summary of the history of your prior discipline. Um, and then after he does that, um, I will turn it to you to present to present your evidence um, in support of why your uh, your um, petitions should be granted. And so. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll place you under oath and have you testify. Um, if you, I'll ask you if you have other documents you wanted to introduce. Um, and if you, do you have any uh, witnesses you wanted to call with you? Uh, no. Okay. And so um, you'll, you'll provide your testimony. And then after you're done testifying, Mr. Stone will have a chance to ask you questions. And then after he asks his questions, if you have anything else you'd like to testify, um, then you can do so. And then it's that, that back and forth process between you and Mr. Stone until both of you are done um, testifying or asking questions. And then once that's done, I will ask the board if there are any questions. Um, and then ask, after the board is done asking questions, um, then um, I will um, dismiss you as a witness and then I will take closing arguments if Mr. Uh, Stone wants to provide one, um, and then also from you if you wish to provide one. Okay, thank you. Okay, and if you have any other questions at any time, please do not hesitate to ask. All right, um, Mr. Stone, if you'd like to present your documents or summary statement, whichever you'd like to do first. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, regarding the documents, we have the uh, notice of hearing and declaration of service, setting the uh, date, time, and place. Uh, for the hearing um, now, and we also have the uh, October 12th, 2022 memorandum uh, regarding uh, the matter, uh, uh, as well as the continuing education log prepared by the board staff. Finally, we have the petitioner's application for reinstatement uh, and exhibits that's uh, at BCE 1 through 629. And then we have the certified copies of uh, petitioner's prior disciplinary documents on file with the board, and those are at uh, BCE 630 through 718. Okay, thank you, Mr. Stone. Um, I'll uh, mark the request to set as Exhibit 1. Um, exhibit 2 consists of the October 12th, 2022 memorandum to the board, continuing education log, and petition for reinstatement of revoked license and petition for reduction in penalty and supporting documents. Uh, three is a citation order. Four is a decision denying petition for reinstatement. Uh, five is a decision and order, stipulated surrender of license and order and accusation and petition to revoke probation. Uh, six is a decision and order uh, stipulated settlement and disciplinary order, uh, first amended accusation and accusation. And then seven is a notice of hearing and an October 20th, 2022 memo to Mr. Stone. Uh, so first, Ms. Bradshaw, do you have any objection to exhibits one 
and or uh, excuse me, one and or seven being introduced for um, jurisdictional purposes only. No. Okay, one and seven are so admitted. And then next, Ms. Bradshaw, do you have any objection to exhibits two, three, four, uh, five, and or six being admitted for all purposes? Uh, no objections. Mm -hmm. Okay, those will be so admitted. Uh, Mr. Stone, whenever you would like to begin with your summary. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, on January 29th, 1996, uh, the board issued chiropractor license number DC 24091 to petitioner. That uh, uh, license was voluntarily surrendered effective October 8th, 2015. We have um, a couple of instances of prior discipline uh, as well as a citation. Um, the uh, first matter uh, is in the decision and order in case number AC 2008-631, uh, which was effective January 6, 2012, uh, regarding a March 11, 2011 uh, filed um, accusation, uh, which uh, disciplined petitioner's license based on allegations of gross negligence, incompetence, repeated negligent acts, failure to refer to a physician, failure to properly document treatment, fraud or misrepresentation, failure to ensure accurate billings, insurance fraud, excessive use of treatment or diagnostic procedure, responsibility for conduct on premises, practicing physical therapy rather than chiropractic, moral turpitude and illegal practice of chiropractic. Then uh, after that, uh, there was a stipulated settlement and disciplinary uh, order entered, uh, accepting the truth of the allegations, putting her on probation for five years um, under standard uh, conditions, terms and conditions. And then, uh, and you can see more about that uh, particular uh, disciplinary action at uh, BCE, uh, approximately page 675. And then, um, following that, on uh, June 6th of, uh, it, well, first, uh, regarding that initial case, uh, it appears that there was a award of cost of $22,271.50, of which it seems that a petitioner has paid $21,375 uh, to the board. After that time, um, uh, a further disciplinary action was um, filed uh, on or about June 6th, 2014. That's case number 2014-999. That uh, disciplinary action uh, related to incompetence, repeated negligent acts, unlawful waiving, sorry, unlawful waiving of a patient's Responsibility to an insurance company, failure to properly display license and obtain satellite office certificates, failure to properly document and maintain patient records, insurance fraud, failure to ensure accurate billings, fraud or misrepresentation, excessive use of treatment or diagnostic procedures, and false advertising. At that point, the uh, that accusation and petition to revoke probation was resolved by a uh, stipulated uh, surrender. Uh, the license was voluntarily surrendered, um, and the board issued a decision effective October 8th of 2015. And uh, you can see more regarding that disciplinary uh, action at or around um, the uh, uh, BCE page 655. Uh, uh, regarding another action, um, a more recent action by the board, uh, on June 3rd, uh, 2021, the board issued citation number C-2021-80 with a $5,000 fine to petitioner for violating uh, California Code of Regulation Title 16, Section 312.1, ownership of a chiropractic practice. Uh, that citation became a final order on July 3rd, 2021. And the records indicate that petitioner paid that fine in full as of July 6th of 2022. The uh, 
decision and order in case uh, AC 2014 uh, she was ordered to pay the board cost of investigation and enforcement in the amount of twenty one thousand six hundred forty five dollars prior to the prior to the issuance of a new or reinstated license. And uh, there is no further information regarding payment in that regard. There was a prior uh, petition uh, for reinstatement um, uh, that was denied uh, effective uh, April 22nd of 2020. The respondent has submitted continuing education documentation, uh, which provides evidence of sufficient continuing education uh, to fulfill the uh, education requirements for each year that her license was surrendered. That is 168 hours of continuing education, including 14 hours of ethics and law, as well as 28 hours of uh, mandatory subject areas. Uh, and that is the background of uh, Respondent's licensure or petitioner's licensure to this point. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stone. Um, all right, Ms. Bradshaw, uh, now's your opportunity to present your evidence. Um, for, do you have any documents you wanted to um, offer? Um, I have nothing different than you have. Okay, not a problem. Okay. Uh, do you wish to testify at this time? Uh, yes, please. Okay, if I could have you raise your right hand, please. <laughs> Do you solemnly swear or affirm under penalty of perjury that the testimony you will provide in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. You may put your hand down. Um, if I could have you start by stating and spelling your full name for the record, please. My name is Andrea Bradshaw, A-N-D-R-E-A-B-R-A-D-S-H-A-W. Thank you. All right, as uh, Ms. Bradshaw, as you saw, um, Perhaps in the prior hearings and uh, also maybe in um, in movies or on TV, it's generally an attorney that calls a witness and the attorney will go about asking the witness questions and the witness will provide answers. Uh, but in this case, since you're representing yourself and it'd be a little weird to have you ask yourself a question and then give an answer, we just allow you to testify in the narrative form. Um, but the one thing I'd ask um, that you keep in mind is that when we talk in narrative form, it's often very common for us to talk a little faster than we normally do. Um, but um, the board members and I are all very interested in hearing um, your testimony. Also the court reporters taking down your testimony. So if you try to keep that in mind and try to keep the pace of your testimony at the slower speed, um, that would be greatly appreciated. So with that in mind, whenever you're ready, you may begin. Okay. Well, Your Honor, thank you, and also members of the board for taking the time to hear my my testimony. Um, I'm petitioning for the license reinstatement. I have accepted responsibility for my actions. Um, I hope it's okay that I'm reading from my uh, notes that I prepared. Um, okay, so um, yeah, just a little bit about me that um, I was licensed in 1996. Um, I'm from Southern California. Um, since seven years old, I've always wanted to be a medical doctor. Um, I found out about chiropractic through um, a chiropractor who was doing his internship at Cleveland Chiropractic College when I was 19. Um, I had had an accident, so he helped me out with that. Um, prior to that, I, I've been a massage therapist for five years before I was a, a chiropractor. I opened my chiropractic office in 1996. And uh, around the year 2000, my sister and I worked together. She's an acupuncturist, and we had a successful business for eight years. Um, let's see. Um, so I have focused for my rehabilitation consistently by studying and attending seminars, both online and in person, and gaining all the material and absorbing uh, as much as I can that was available to me. Um, part of that, well, let me just backtrack. Um, okay, so uh, let's see, sorry. Um, so yeah, so I did join the, I do definitely take responsibility for all of my actions. I've put out a lot of effort to uh, become rehabilitated um, I understand and rehabilitated by covering all of the acts that I was cited for. 
Through rehabilitation, I've gained knowledge on ethics, laws and regulations, record keeping, billing and coding, practice, techniques, history and examination, x-ray and file management practices. I do understand that the people I hire need to be qualified, competent and licensed by background checks and references. I did join the associations. I joined uh, the ACA, the ICA and the CCA. And I joined these associations to learn and take advantage of the material that they offered. Um, I joined as a student, um, so I got many um, CEUs from CCA. I have, I have all the, I could read them, but it might take a couple more hours if I read through everything that I've done, but I can just put it in a nutshell um, because you do have the, my documents, but let me know if I need to read it. But otherwise, through the CCA, I have, um, earned 11 CEUs plus 27 general credits. Through the ACA, 36 CEs. This is all mostly for diagnostics, treatment, rehab, and guidelines for best practices. I also joined the ICA, which covered ethics and philosophy. They didn't have as much on that website, but I did as much as I could. Um, and then my rehabilitation, uh, you know, I, I can just cover it. Should I just cover all my rehabilitation for you? That's what I want to do. So um, with literature um, that I've, I've covered ethics, I've covered literature online through the ACA, Dynamic Chiropractic, the Federation of Chiropractic Licensing Boards, the ACA, Aetna, Cigna, Blue Shield, Anthem, Medical Lean Recovery, .com, United Healthcare, Blue Cross Blue Shield, BoardVitals.com, Wexner Medical, NCBI, and CairoEcho.com, and Spine Universe. I've um, had I've uh, covered four articles with, of ethics, twenty-seven articles covering billing, nineteen articles covering practice nine articles covering record keeping, documentation and coding, two articles regarding history taking an exam, two on x-ray and 30 articles regarding therapy and adjusting. That's the literature. I read three books, two on ethics. One was ethics um, regarding public health by Deacon. One was ethics in healthcare by Raymond. And I had another one on soft tissue examination and treatment by Hammer. Um, am I doing okay so far? I'm okay. Okay. Um, You're fine. Okay. Um, I did also have uh, a couple of mentors and other associations with um, many successful chiropractors, but the the major one that stood out for me, his name is Jason, Dr. Jason Warall. So he runs a very successful chiropractic office. And so I uh, took the time to go to his office regularly for over a year to observe how he practiced, how he um, worked with the biophysics model and his extensive note taking using the Cairo touch and um, I really enjoyed learning how he practiced and that model, which was um, diagnostic with x-rays and um, the traction and his education and how he communicated with patients really influenced me. So I really absorbed that. I also had other uh, mentors. I had Dr. Russell Rosen, who he's a practice management coach. He was also the mentor that I met initially who encouraged me to be a chiropractor, you know, when he was an intern. So I reached back out to him to learn from him. Um, these are both successful chiropractors and they run cash practices. Um, in addition, I have watched numerous videos on YouTube, um, 47 of them, mostly for adjusting and physical examination and orthopedic testing. 
I've watched 36 non-CE webinars on PT, rehabilitation, and examination. I did also uh, attend the Chiropractic Business Academy to learn to run a cash and patient communication. I also attended billing seminars, um, H.J. Ross uh, seminars, and I've studied the two large booklets. And I also took uh, seminars on the CCA website, which covered, uh, I took a few billing courses that were covered on the CCA website. Um, let's see, there is more. Um, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be reading uh, each each thing I did in the transcript, you know, each uh, CE unit that I covered, but I have transcripts here. So you don't need to, if, it, if they're documents that you've provided, that you don't, you don't necessarily need to read each of them. Um, but, um, I mean, you could talk in general about what, what you did to rehabilitate, you know, keep in mind what the board's most interested in is hearing about your rehabilitation. Um, so, you know, talking generally about your CEs and then, you know, if the certificates are in the record, yeah, you, know, you could talk about them generally and then refer to the certificates. Um, yeah, okay. and then we could take a look at them if we need more specific information, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah, well, I did um, mention that they're they are mostly covering um, what I mentioned, which was, you know, diagnostics, treatment, rehab, guidelines for practices. I don't know if I need to repeat it, but ethics and philosophy. The other thing I uh, addressed were all the causes for my actions. Um, is it okay if I go over the causes and the rehabilitation or how, what I gained or learned? Sure, you could you know, learn how you've grown or changed. Okay, so, well, the first cause were um, allegations of not posting the suspension license, even though I should have known. I was aware that other locations, I was not aware at the time. I, ha I actually had three offices. I practiced in one, I rented the other out, but at the time, I did not know those were sub offices. So I just posted in one office. I should have known, but now I'm aware that other office locations that I leased out or um, they needed my posting of surrendered license, although they were not my actual practice location, but they were my sub offices. And later I realized that. Um, the second cause was failure to submit a quarter, quarterly reports accurately. Um, well, let me just, one more thing is I took care of my father. He was a, a victim of a drunk driving accident. So he had an accident in 2014, which incapacitated him. And so I took the time as he, he got worse, uh, with his, uh, his health care, his health declined. So in about, um, uh, in 20, 2004, I started taking care of him, but as he progressed and he had three strokes later, each time I took more and more time away from my practice to focus on caring for my father. Um, so really, in around, at around 2011, I was not even paying attention really to my practice. I was caring mostly for him as his caretaker, um, paying for everything, doing everything for him, taking of him to doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, you know, everything and everything else involved with that. So um, I really didn't work too much in chiropractic. The times I, you know, I, I don't even know how many hours I worked, but it was really not that many hours where my mentor and I, we really had limited information to discuss at our meetings because they were a short duration due to the fact I was barely working. And we did spend time, you know, the, the allegation was that I had failed to submit quarterly reports accurately. I, I believe that had to do with the time that we spent together. It was noted that we were supposed to spend, he was supposed to spend 50% of the time, 50% of my work hours with me um, in meetings. And so but there was not much to discuss, but we, we tried our best and I submitted all the reports. It may not have it may have appeared that I had uh, been with him 
less time than I should have for monitoring. Um, so nevertheless, I did meet with my mentor and I did file reports. The third cause was to, uh, I failed to notify employees of the terms and conditions of my probation. Even though I did post the notice in one of, in the office that I was practicing, um, I assumed that was sufficient. Later, I found out that I was negligent by failing to identify my sub offices. I've since learned that all the notices must be posted in all facilities, including satellite and sub offices. Uh, the fourth cause was monitoring. My monitor and I were unaware of the true amount of time the board required for our meetings, and we based our meetings on my work week, which was around three to five hours a week. Um, I saw cash patients, no insurance, and just a few of them. I was mostly out of the office of taking care of my father and his real estate business. Um, the doctor and I met around one and a half to two hours every time. And uh, we thought that was enough, but apparently not. Um, so the fifth cause was to failure to obey all the laws. As evidenced by all documents submitted to the board, I'm now familiar with all the applicable laws, rules, and regulations. The first cause for my discipline uh, was the accusation of, for poor notations, um, poor note taking. I researched and have learned that using medical necessity uh, forms are best for proper documentation and that they would be most accurate. That's not what I did before, but now I know. Uh, the second cause for discipline were repeated negligent acts. I've researched now and I'm aware of and understand the proper procedures for documentation of diagnosis, purpose and outcomes with correct coding when submitting clean insurance claims. The third cause for discipline, uh, by the way, I do know that these causes um, Sometimes they were you know, a couple paragraphs thick, but if I go to read all those, it's gonna take hours. So I, I condense them into the essential uh, synopsis of you know, my recognition and what I've done for these. Uh, third cause of discipline, unlaw unlawful waiving of patient's insurance responsibility. I am now overcautious in the hiring process to check references, train and monitor the personnel in regards to administrative safeguards as specified in my chiropractic compliance checklist, which I have here. I can go over that later. Um, okay, the fourth cause of discipline was failure to properly display license and satellite license. I am now aware that all the offices, including satellite offices, need the licenses displayed. The fifth cause for discipline was delinquency in properly maintaining and documenting uh, patient records. My mistake of oversight led to incorrect documentation and insurance claim submission. I have since attended H.J. Ross billing seminar and many other online and chiropractic association billing courses. Um, let's see, where are uh, this? Okay, so I have learned correct office procedures for documentation, note taking, insurance billing, and coding that instill my confidence to prevent any future mistakes. The sixth cause for my discipline was insurance fraud. Well, from my rehabilitation, I've learned that ethical insurance billing involves oversight, proper documentation for the necessity of treatment, and correct ICD-10 coding to support the insurance claim. I understand the implications of fraud, not only as disciplinary, but as an effect to the public by increased premiums and costs for the services. The seventh cause of discipline is failure to ensure accurate billings. Well, after rehabilitation, I'm confident in the rules and regulations for insurance billing that I would never make this mistake again. I will hire a qualified and experienced biller to assist and double check the documentation and coding before submitting insurance claims. The eighth cause is fraud or misrepresentation. I've learned to prevent fraud and abuse by avoiding unnecessary treatment, submitting appropriate referral and treatment forms, and ensuring accuracy 
when submitting claims for my services. The ninth cause was excessive use of treatment or diagnostic procedures. Well, now I'm definitely aware to maintain proper documentation that shows the necessity for correct and conservative treatment. Um, at, this time, at the time, I did admit to making mistakes that I've since learned from. First and foremost are to pay attention and follow the rules and regulations of chiropractic. Secondly is to adhere to my chiropractic compliance checklist, which is the BCE 000015. Um, it's here. Um, let me see uh, what else. Just going to cover everything. Um, um, I'm not sure if you want to know my activities, but I will let you know that. So I have um, also been a property manager. That's what I've been doing for my work. And that involves, um, I'm a property manager for three short-term rentals, vacation rentals. And that has kept me very busy, not only with everything non-physical about it, but also the physical part of it, which sometimes involves um, handyman work, which is, you know, painting, redoing decks, assisting the handyman with electrical stuff and uh, propane tanks and water heaters and all kinds of other things. So um, these vacation rentals are in the mountains. So I've had to, you know, drive in crises to do things to these homes and um, just keep a good reputation online for, um, you know, good reviews. I have great reviews for these and I think I do a great job and that's, that's what I've been doing with my time. Um, I did take care of my father from full time, pretty much from 2011 until he passed away, uh, 2018. And, um, so I really wasn't practicing chiropractic. I was really, my work was caring for him and his real estate business. He was a broker for 40 years. So I had to take care of that and wrap that up. Um, I'm still licensed. The other thing that I've been doing is I, I um, reinstated my, I renewed my real estate license um, and spent considerable time most recently with my rehabilitation. And it's, it's actually taken, it, I mean, it's almost like I OCD'd on it. Uh, doing all this for in a short condensed period of time and I'm glad I had the time to do that because I've learned a lot um, it was a blessing in disguise that I've had to go through this it's been humiliating it's uh, affected me financially mentally um, but I've learned a lot and I'm thankful for that I'm thankful for, you know it's been very difficult <laughs> Um, and that's it. The only thing I have to add is um, my compliance checklist, which I created, which would inhibit me from making any mis mistakes in the future. Um, this covers topics um, of being HIPAA compliant, um, having um, uh, HIPAA compliance, all computers and passwords, you know, password product, protected everything, um, patient files under lock and key, um, other chiropractors performance, you know, everyone has to have their license. Um, the doctors have to make accurate assessments for the patients to treat them and care for them. They're manipulating. Um, there are clinical practice guidelines for the chiropractors based on evidence-based suggestions for appropriate care. Um, also to consider risk from unforeseen complications and avoid taking risks that would merit evaluation by the board um, to identify and stay on top of risks before they become severe. 
um, also to keep sufficient patient records, to itemize all chiropractic treatment rendered, to consider patient safety, dignity, and clinical appro appropriateness, to provide training and safety precautions for all mechanical um, devices used by practitioners, um, also um, practitioners, you know, me including when I say practitioner, to not make or advertise any unusual claims of superiority of treatments, use well-documented parameters of frequency and duration for care. Um, since every need uh, for di different patients are unique, the doctor needs to make the best judgment based on um, their education and adhere to the rules of chiropractic. Um, and then there are administrative safeguards, which would be to follow policies and procedures to help protect against unauthorized access to ensure medical privacy, um, the staff to collect co-pays, deductibles and fees as directed. Um, other safeguards are to oversee documentation processes um, and other doctor's responsibilities, their training requirements, security of records, uh, maintenance of the data, and all encompassing the routine office procedures, which are the collecting co-pays, co-insurance and deductibles, um, offer prepaid plans for cash patients. Um, physical safeguards would be video surveillance with door locks and locations of servers and computers. Um, let's see, code of conduct to comply with all federal and state laws and regulations for medical billing which would include routine self-auditing for, uh, which would be completed prior to billing for items for services, services provided, providing medical necessity items or services, upcoding, um, uh, no upcoding, un unbundling of serv services and to not do any duplicate billing and um, record maintenance, holding records for five years or more. So that's my uh, routine compliance checklist. Um, and I think I covered everything. I mean, the only thing I could go over is that all of my literature is very extensive as far as, um, like I said, uh, I could read it, I could go through it, but there's lists of uh, numerous citations here that I, I'm not sure if you want me to go over or well, I, I, I don't know what it is so I can't really tell you is, is there documentation in did you say uh, everything document? that you have like my uh, transcripts for my CE units I completed so are you, is it in the documentation provided yes okay so you don't need to just read the documents that that doesn't help us so if it's in there then you know like I said before you could you don't have to read what's in what's in the evidence. Okay. Well, I, I do understand and um, understand the negligence and uh, all of the things that I was cited for. Uh, I understand, and I've rehabilitated. I feel that um, I'm more than qualified to enter into the chiropractic profession confidently that I would be of no harm to anyone. Um, I feel comp very competent after my rehabilitation that I can enter the chiropractic profession again without making any mistakes. I've made a lot of mistakes. I learned from all of them. And um, I feel that I can go forward and not look back as I've definitely changed myself. I've spent quite a bit of time to do that. And I hope that I could have the confidence of the board to allow me my license so I can practice chiropractic. This is something that I love. I'm very good at. I'm very good with people. I've never had any bad reputations with people. And I've always, um, serve people with the best care that I can. And um, I'm trustworthy and honorable to everyone I come in contact with.
and I feel that I am qualified to enter back into the profession. All right, thank you. Mr. Stone, cross-examination. Yes, thank you. Um, back uh, initially, when you were first disciplined, this is back in about 2008 for conduct, ultimately leading in a decision in order, putting you on probation in 2012. But that case involved, um, well, in terms of uh, consumers, uh, 12, about 12 patients uh, that uh, uh, where there were issues regarding uh, gross negligence and confidence and repeated negligent acts regarding them, failure to refer to, pay, to, to, to physicians. Um, uh, so there, were, there was that conduct regarding patients. And then there was also the, the issues regarding the um, excessive and inaccurate billing, the failures of documentation and things of, of that regard. You were uh, put on uh, probation for that type of conduct. And then again, um, a couple of years later, found yourself uh, in a situation um, with somewhat uh, uh, repeated uh, behavior. Can you tell us um, what is different now between um, uh, what you did to try to rehabilitate yourself from that first um, action, uh, which did not seem to stick, which led you to having trouble in the second action? Can you tell me what the difference is now in what you've done to rehabilitate yourself um, uh, at this juncture as opposed to after your initial discipline? Yes. Um... I focused initially, well, actually, my dad passed away. So I took the time afterwards to focus on my rehabilitation, which I didn't focus. I thought I had before, but I, I really didn't. Once I joined the chiropractic associations and dived into their information, um, I realized that I had not learned what I should have learned in the beginning for the rehabilitation. So I actually, when I came to my first meeting, I was not fully rehabilitated as I am now. I didn't have this knowledge behind me at that point. So joining these associations really definitely helped me to understand, uh, you know, going through all of these, uh, all the literature that I've read. I hadn't read all this before. I hadn't done really the rehabilitation before as, as I've done for this, this time round. And that was because I, I really didn't have the time to focus as much as I was taking care of, of my father. So, so that's the difference. It, uh, it generally is what you're saying that, that between your first disciplinary action and your second disciplinary action, you uh, were distracted by personal situations re regarding your father? Yes. And then you fell into the same or similar sort of bad habits regarding treatment of patients and documentation? Um, okay. Um, I, yeah. I really just recently, uh, in the past few years, focused on my rehabilitation. And uh, are you talking about uh, when someone, let's see, are you talking about, which year are you talking about exactly? Well, I was generally talking about the uh, time frame between uh, your first disciplinary action, which began in around 2008 and concluded in about 2012 when you were placed on probation. Okay. And then, and then you uh, found yourself in disciplinary trouble again um, uh, shortly after that, um, leading to your uh, 2014 accusation um, and the, the uh the case in 2014. Okay, well, the first, the first accusation with all those patients, um, I, I'm not sure if really how that, I, I kind of assume how it came about. I don't think all those people actually complained about me by themselves, but I had a woman in my office who was the manager at that time that stole my ID. And this was her retaliation. She stole files from my office. She opened a clinic down the street from me, took my mailing list and 
she took stole my ID, bought a Mercedes, used my her, my information for her credit all over town. So when I reprimanded her, I know this is kind of a side side to this, but this this led up to that. That led up to this. So when I reprimanded her and I turned her in and she lost the Mercedes and all of that, she had also created these allegations uh, with the 13, I believe, th these 12 patients and created the claim for the board because she had all this information because I billed the Medicare. So she had my social, she did everything in my office. She had access to all these patient files. I don't believe any, I actually talked to a few of them and they said, no, we didn't want to, I didn't want to do this. Uh, Shira was her name, um, had a petition and asked me to sign this. And I said, I didn't want to do it. So there was a few people that, that said that, but nevertheless, I'm still responsible for the records that were incomplete for those patients in the office. Some of the records were taken out of the office by her. So, and she actually opened a practice. She's not a doctor down the street from me and siphoned patients that way. But nevertheless, I took responsibility for that, for those uh, patient files. And um, so I, I understand that that was my responsibility and I was disciplined for that. Um, I really never started rehabilitating until, you know, within the past few years, that was a, a while ago. So I was definitely not rehabilitated or ready to, uh, be in the place where I, I feel that I am now. Um, and, and then, and, in, and, and if, sorry for interrupting, but, um, and what makes you in a better place now than you were? Um, I'm rehabilitated. I'm more knowledgeable through all the literature that I've seen all the videos I've seen, all the, the mentors that I've had, my other um, acquaintances that are chiropractors who are very successful, um, visiting them, talking with them, learning from them, um, the literature, the videos, the, um, all the CE units that I've done, not only these, but all the, the regular ones, plus all of these. So I've covered areas that I never really have covered before for my rehabilitation. So I am a new person, I would say, from, from looking at these past years and these past allegations, I, I'm renewed. I have uh, renewed knowledge. I have, I have more knowledge now than ever. And I feel that I'm, I have enough knowledge that I can practice, you know, not only the mental part of it and the, the legal part of it, but the physical part of it as well. Um, did you contact any chiropractors or uh, former patients of yours uh, regarding uh, providing any uh, letters of support or testimony in support of you? Um, I do have testimonials um, from a couple of doctors, um, a receptionist, and some patients that I did submit. Okay. And that and was from the last time I submitted it, from the last board meeting. Uh, from a prior petition? Yes. So you submitted um, letters of support uh, uh, at that petition, but not anything in support in regard to this petition? The only one that I have is from uh, Mr. Nate Holden. The letter that he, he recommended that um, he recommended to the board that I, he felt that I was uh, ready to be heard for my testimony and he knows I'm looking for the letter. You have the letter. Okay. Your... Well, if it's in the file, we do have it. Thank yeah, you. Yes. So he's my biggest testimony behind me. And then in regard to um, costs of investigation and enforcement regarding prior actions, um, uh, do you have uh, an ability to pay those or in some type of plan um, if um, you to be reinstated? Okay, so I, I paid 21,000, something like that. I paid the additional money and then they said, you know, there's another 20 something thousand left, right? Another 20 something thousand. Um, I'm prepared to make payments. Of course, I, I wanna pay all of my debts. I don't wanna go owing, owing the board money, 
Um, I did request to, um, to uh, what do you call it, retract that or um, what do you call it? I don't know, retract that last 20,000 only because I'm not Redu really reduce, working. Reduce it. reduce it. Reduce it. I'm not working. My property management just barely pays my bills. And, but I'm prepared to pay it. Um, yes, I, I will pay the in, pay it in payments. And if, if you were if reinstated, if you were reinstated, would you be willing to do that under probationary terms? Yes. Regarding a monitoring of your practice? Yes. And then, uh, finally, um, after the, uh, e even after your license was revoked, after the 2 discipline disciplinary actions, you received a citation in June of 2021, uh, and were fined $5,000, which I believe you paid. Can you tell us what the circumstances of that issue were? Yes, that was very interesting. Um, okay. Yes. I did have a business before called Pacifica Healthcare from 2011 to 2020, and it was a billing company. And I hired a biller to do my billing at the time, but I've not, uh, I had no billing done for me because I wasn't working, but I still had the Pacifica Healthcare. Um, and then I actually, prior to my rehabilitation, I did meet an attorney to give me some insight to this. And he took a look at my business and he, he mentioned to me that I need, it just didn't seem right. It was kind of in a gray area, even though um, I had this billing company. Uh, there was someone in my office, I had the three offices, okay? So I had rented them out. So there was someone there who was doing billing and I, I wasn't there. I really didn't supervise him. He paid the rent and he, he did his billing for other, you know, medical doctors or whoever he did it for. And, uh, and other people, I really didn't know what he was doing because I, I wasn't there, but it was assumed, well, technically, uh, whatever actions that he did in the office, I was responsible for, even though I have no idea what he was doing. I was, I was away from the office, but he did, I don't even know what he did. He, uh, he did billing for doctors. Um, I don't know who the doctors were. I don't know what he did, but there was a case in the office where um, a, a female and a female uh, wife and wife or something like that had a treatment and they had accused it started something like this that they were they were accusing a therapist or a doctor in the office of negligence or sexual misconduct or inappropriate touching is what it was and they actually sued they sued me they sued pacifica healthcare because whatever billing they had was from pacifica healthcare um, i didn't know the patients but they created this lawsuit. They also created a situation to the board of chiropractic for um, that. I was told a chiropractor who, who initially saw them or one of them, one of these women. So it became a, a case with the board. And from my knowledge, uh, the billing was uh, needed to be, uh, I guess for these patients, they, uh, the board had requested billing for them which was under the, my Pacifica Healthcare. Um, I never saw the, these people, but apparently from what I heard, the doctor who treated them initially has an issue with the board because of their case. And um, from what I heard, really nothing happened to, the, you know, nothing really happened. They were just out to get money. And I think they did get money because I did have liability insurance for the office and actually, um, they were paid for this, this claim that they made. And also, uh, the doctor was affected. I'm not too sure in what way or who it was, but that's what I was told. Uh, but then again, I was, um, the collateral damage in a way, but so basically 
it was, it, it, it looks as though, you know, it, it was my business. So I was reprimanded for practicing without a license because I owned the company. So there was a person there who did the billing who operated as his company. So he did things. Um, I don't know what he did, but he was operating it. But I have to take responsibility for his act actions. Uh, because you were an owner of a chiropractic uh, I was the owner of Pacific Healthcare. You, you, Sorry, I, I didn't get your full question, Council. Uh, I apologize. Let me, let me repeat that. So, um, after your license was surrendered, um, effective 2015, you had an ownership interest in a chiropractic practice? Uh, prior to that, I had... Um, it wasn't for me, it was a, a billing company for for... Uh, chiropractic billing for, for myself and I had the biller there doing it but I stopped practicing so he wasn't doing my billing but he he maintained billing for other doctors various doctors chiropractic so you, and medical so and you he ran really a business well, I apologize so so your, your business was basically doing the billing uh, yes mm -hmm. for a chiropractic office uh, it was even though I wasn't there, um, he was doing the billing. So I take responsibility for the actions of what was going on. Anyhow, so the, my attorney looked at my, uh, looked at my business and he advised me to, uh, that I needed to, you know, close that business right away. And I did because he said it was in a gray area. It was technically, you know, even though I wasn't physically there, but it was still in my name. And someone else, you know, everything was operating, but I, my name was on the business. So I, it didn't look right. So he advised me to close the business and I did. Um, I don't have anything further. Thank you. Welcome. All right, Ms. Bradshaw, anything else you'd like to say on your behalf? Um, I do. Um, are you interested in how I may practice or no? If you think it's relevant and you haven't talked about it yet, then if you think that shows part of your rehabilitation. Yeah, I think so. Well, the way from my knowledge and everything I've gained now, I would practice a completely different way than I have in the past. Um, that would definitely be by following the rules and regulations that govern chiropractic. It will be definitely following my chiropractic compliance checklist. It would definitely be to follow evidence-based guidelines and practice as a subluxation-based chiropractor, um, educating, empowering patients, um, promoting chiropractic to the public at, at events is what I did before at races at the beach and things like that. Um, using resources from the ACA or the billing uh, or online researches if I have any questions, um, as well as practicing with other doctors who are uh, better at other treatments or adjusting than I am, and to mentor. Um, I've examined all of my violations and I found the solutions for all of the mistakes that I've made. Um, I will operate my business according to a plan to be successful. And I look forward to do this. And I am confident that I can have a successful legal practice and uh, definitely be of no harm to the public, but be um, in the best interest to the public to take care of them in the best way possible, as I always have. And that's all I have to say. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Um, Stone, anything further on recross? No, thank you, Your Honor. All right, I'll uh, check uh, for questions from the board. Uh, Dr. Paris, any questions? I do, I have a couple questions. Um, first, thank you, Ms. Bradshaw, for your testimony today and uh, for appearing before us. I'm, my first question is simple. I'm just wondering, were you, um, was there, was any part of your, um, rehabilitation probationary terms from the board did, did any at any time did those require you to take and pass the state jurisprudence exam 
to retake it? Um, I did take an ethics course. I did add that I saw a psychologist to make sure that I'm mentally okay, and I am. I'm, I'm, I'm only, I'm, it's a very specific question. I'm just asking if you recall if your probationary terms ever required you to uh, retake the state jurisprudence test. Um, no, but I think it was requiring me to take a, an ethics course, and I did. Okay. Thank it you. Didn't, the answer was no. Okay. And uh, m my second question is, was your testimony here today that you did the, for the fine that you received on June 3rd, 2021, the, and uh, the 5,000 that you completed paying July 6, 2022, um, it was your testimony that you did not, in fact, you, you had no ownership of that practice? That was the thing. Okay. Okay. Technically, I was an owner. Even though I wasn't there, technically, that's what my attorney said. Technically, I was the owner. You so, weren't aware that you were the owner? That I, I was the owner of the Pacifica Healthcare, uh, which is a billing company, which did the billing for that case I was telling you about, the, the ladies with the sexual misconduct, uh, which mm -hmm. led to uh, that, I think, that so, I was, billing was coming out of, out of an an office that I had, it wasn't, I wasn't really practicing. And then, excuse me, uh, it also mentioned that Relax Holistic was a name of my business. And it, it wasn't, I mean, that was a name of a website a long time ago. So I never practiced with that name. Okay, so Miss Bradshaw, let me try to get you to refocus. So make sure you're listening to the question being asked and that you're answering the question asked. Because you're not really answering Dr. Paris's question. Um, you're, you're going on a, a different tangent. Um, so, Dr. Paris, I, I don't know if, if you wanted to re-ask or, or, or if you got the information you were looking for. Yeah, I'll move on. Thank you. Um, and so, my next question is, are you, are you aware at this point that as, un, as an unlicensed uh, person, you're that you are not allowed to own a chiropractic practice? Yes, I'm fully aware of that. Okay. And, and I don't. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't own a practice and I'm, I'm aware of that. And I'm wondering, uh, so the providers that you had in that office, how did they arrive to work there? How did they, how did they show up, end up with a room and how were they paid? Okay, so the guy who was running the office and his own billing um, engaged with all of them. I was never there. I don't even know who they are. He was paying them and paying himself and paying the rent. So how was he paying them? Um, I think they were paid hourly for their time, but I don't know exactly um, how much or who they even are who, or who they were. And you had mentioned earlier that uh, you, um, you'd said there was either a therapist or a doctor in the office that had uh, a complaint filed against them. Yes. And I, I'm just very curious as to how you wouldn't have very, very good clarity on exactly what that situation was that occurred in the office. Oh, I, I have clarity. There was a so was it a doctor or a therapist? It was a therapist, a massage therapist who was accused of inappropriate touching. And the accuser also accused the chiropractor of something. I don't know what. And reported that chiropractor to the board. So did you mean to say a doctor and a therapist? A doctor and a therapist. Yes. Okay. And then going back to the office that you owned. Um, with the, the, the 1 that you, the citation that you paid a, the fine for, mm -hmm. um, were there any other DCs, any other, um, chiropractor licensed chiropractors that also, um, was there any other discipline or anything else from the board that came out of that to those providers? I have no idea. I don't even know who they were. I cannot say. I, I thank you. Um, I have no further questions. Dr. Adams, any questions? I have no questions. 
Mr. Sweet, any questions? Yeah, just a, a quick question. Um, thank you for your testimony today. The um, you mentioned that you had started your re rehabilitation efforts uh, a few years ago. Is that right? Yes. And so I, I think uh, along the lines of what Dr. Paris was asking, I'm still a little confused as to after having started those rehabilitation efforts, you found yourself owning a, a business or a practice that, um, that you didn't seem to have a lot of knowledge about. Can you, can you help me rectify that? Yes. Um, I had an office that I rent out to people to make sure the rent is paid. One guy uh, worked there who just decided to run it as his own office uh, using Pacifica Healthcare, my billing and created bills or I don't know, he engaged with doctors. So it was my office that I lease. I have a long-term lease, so I have to keep it rented out. But technically this Pacifica Healthcare that he did the billing under, it, it is, it was my business. It was, you know, the state of California, a business. Um, even though I, I didn't engage with it, I was just very distracted. I didn't even think about that he was going to do anything because that was for my billing because he had other, uh, he had his own patients and clients and other doctors and medical doctors that he did his billing for. So I don't know, you know, I was off limits. I didn't tell him what to do. He was like on a, his own, uh, he was his own business person operating in my space. Okay. Thank you. So whatever billing he did, I don't know what it was. Thank you for that. Yeah. Nothing further. All right. Ms. Cruz, any questions? Um, so it, it was your office and it was your, your business name. At any point, did you kind of engage to ask to not use your business since it yes, was your property? Yes. And I, I um, dissolved the business after that. Okay. Uh, also, since there were DC providers kind of in the building, uh, were they aware of the, your license status as the owner of the business? Um, I don't even know who was there. I was never there. Okay. I was never in the office. The business Fair. Um, was a billing company. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an actual chiropractic business called this. Uh, it mm -hmm. was a billing company. So the biller uh, did whatever he did to meet doctors, do their billing. I, I don't really know what he did, or I was didn't have access to what really he was doing. Okay, thank you. And then, um, if your license is reinstated, you would you plan to ha have it be your own practice or join a separate practice, kind of outside the. I guess what I'm getting at is that you've clearly done a lot of research and taken courses of how best to run a chiropractic business. And so I'm interested to know kind of, would you plan to own your own practice, join a separate practice? Essentially, what support would you have in place to help with the areas you've been att attempting to work on? And yes. So, yeah, I would like to work with other doctors. Um, Mostly because I don't know everything and I've been out for a while. So I'm sure there, you know, I can't do everything. I would like to know that I'm working with other people who could pick up where I leave off or if I could refer people to, or there might be techniques or strength involved that, or techniques or different situations that it would be good to have other doctors to bounce information off of or refer them or just to work with a, another group of doctors. Is what I would like to be doing. Great, thank you. No more questions. Dr. Daniels, any questions? Uh, yeah, just really quickly. Uh, hi, Ms. Bradshaw. Um, so, how long did you own? Was it called Pacifica Health Center? Yeah, it was no. It was called Pacifica Healthcare from 2011 to 2020. So during that time, you never went into it. Did you just receive the rent from it? Is that, am I understanding that correctly? Um, no, you're, no, it's a misunderstanding. Um, the office, it was just a rented space to, to shared space with many, many doctors. The biller who was there, 
who used to do my, who was doing my billing under Pacifica Healthcare when I was practicing, uh, remained in the office and he took it over. So he paid the rent and um, he worked his business. And uh, so it wasn't really a business where people came into called Pacifica Healthcare. It, it's not, it wasn't like that. It was more no, like I a, a business that I, a, an ownership of a corporation that I own, not, not a DPA or anything like that. Yeah, I understand. I'm just in the years that the other chiropractor was there doing the billing, you never stopped by, you just received the rent check. Is that correct? Uh, no, he paid the rent directly. And I stopped by occasionally to make sure everything was okay in the space, that it's clean and functioning and everything was still there. So, you know, occasionally I would stop by, but I wasn't working there for okay, quite some thanks. time. So you said if your license was reinstated, you might like to work with other chiropractors. Do you have a place to go in mind or do you have a plan? I do have a plan. Well, yeah, I do have a plan. Um, yeah, I would take I would take the space that I have that's rented to other people and other types of practitioners and take a room there part time and uh, build up a practice again. And okay, thank and, you. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. No other questions. All right, I think that's all the board members, uh, but I'll check to see if any uh, members have uh, subsequently thought of any questions. Uh, any further questions from the board? Yeah, I do. I have one more. Sure. Um, so, if I'm understanding this arrangement correctly, you own the building. No. <laughs> right. Okay. So, so you had you had the the billing company, and when that and the biller worked under your billing company. Yes. Care. Yes. Okay. And so when was was that biller doing the billing for the chiropractors that were renting space in that office? Which you had a lease, correct? That was yes. Long -term lease. I'm um, sorry. Yeah. I I believe he was. So I, Pacific, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But Pacific Healthcare was your business, correct? It was a, a billing company. Yeah, it was not a DBA with a bill with the name on the building or advertising. Is that your that. business. Yes. Okay, and the billing was going out under Pacific Healthcare. Yes. And your your testimony is that this person who used to do your billing moved in there and kind of usurped that business from you or took it over unbeknownst to you. Yes. And he was, in fact, doing the billing for the other chiropractors in that office. Um, he, he may have been with other with in addition to his own clients. So I don't know what capacity I was off limits to his computer. So you do not office. know if any of the billing out of that office was coming under Pacific Healthcare. Is that your testimony? It, it was coming for a certain time. I don't know until what time. Okay. And my yes, last question is, were you aware that there was discipline against one of the licensees there on billing charges? I was told that there was someone, but I don't know who that was. Because you, that was the, you, you mentioned other complaints, but you didn't mention that in your testimony. Yes, I did mention that um, there was someone, you know, with that case uh, that I was telling you about these, these two uh, lesbian ladies that made an accusation against the massage therapist, I believe to get money, made a case and, and reported their initial doc, the chiropractor who they saw in the, in the office to the board. Okay. And, uh, and, and I think it was all orchestrated so they can make money fraudulently from insurance. But you were aware that that included billing charges that there was enforcement against the licensee out of that office. Um, I don't know the details, but okay, something thank you. to do with that. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Any further questions from the ward? Um, this is Jeff Stone. I, I just have a quick follow up. Uh, Dr. Paris, I believe that you had a question uh, earlier of the petitioner. Uh, I think it related to whether she 
um, had taken or was ordered to take the uh, uh, NBCE ethics course. Is that correct? No, he asked about one of the tests. Yes, jurisprudence. Yeah, I was asking about the state jurisprudence test. Okay. I just wanted to uh, clarify on that. Thank you. And, and the reason I asked that, um, just for clarification, was I was I was trying to get an idea of, um, you know, whether or not you had refreshed yourself with the rules and regulations of practicing in California. And, I did. I, I thought that. I mentioned that. I thought I did. No, mention I, that. I meant formally, as in the board making that a probationary term to you. That's what I was asking. Mm. Yeah. All right. So, and the probationary term, okay, Mr. Mr. Stone, Mr. Stone, you're out of order. Do you have further questions for the witness? No, I don't. All right. So, Ms. Bradshaw, you are excused as a witness. Okay. Um, do you rest your case, Ms. Bradshaw? I think I've just um, divulged everything that I know that I can. Okay, so uh, it's, so do, we're done taking testimony. Do you have any further evidence you want to? Do you have any other documents or witnesses you want to call? Out, call? No, not at All this right. time. So, uh, Mr. Stone, your closing argument. Uh, we'll waive that, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, Ms. Bradshaw, your closing argument. My closing argument. Yes. I hope that the Board of Chiropractic. Um, has confidence in me that I'm able to practice by the law and uh, take care of patients, health, safety, and welfare, um, and make no more mistakes or repeat any of the mistakes that I've made. I've learned tremendously from my mistakes, and uh, I, I would like to practice again, as this is something that I really miss, and it's been a life disruptor for me on many ends. I do not wish to be a handyman property manager for the rest of my life. And chiropractic is really the only other thing that I do that I would like to continue to do. So um, I pray and wish that everything goes well. And um, I thank you for your time as well. All right, thank you. So uh, that concludes the hearing. Uh, the records closed. The matter submitted, and we are off the record. Um, so, Ms. Bradshaw, as you may, may have heard me say to the other petitioners and their counsel, um, the board will meet in closed session to discuss um, all the petition matters we heard today, and then um, a decision will be issued at a later date. Um, and then, once it is, you'll receive a copy in the mail. Um, and then, um, probably sometime tomorrow, uh, you should receive a copy of the court reporter billing detail from my office. Um, so that's for your records in case you want to order a copy of the transcript. Okay. Uh, okay. Do you have any questions? No. Okay. I don't. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank and you. Madam court reporter, if I could get a page estimate when you're ready. I have 63 pages. Okay. And is there anything you need from me or the board? Uh, no, I don't believe so. Did you get my CSR number? Um, I did get it. Thank you very okay. much. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Um, Dr. Paris, I will turn the matter back to you. Thank you. Um, well, why don't we, uh, take a quick 5 minute break for the, um, for the board members bathroom break. And then, uh, I want to inform the public that we will go, we'll be going into a closed session at this time. And the meeting will go into recess immediately following closed session. Um, thank you to the members of the public for attending today's meeting and the meeting will reconvene tomorrow, 9 a.m. Uh, Thursday, October 27, 2022. And at this time, I'd ask the moderator to uh, start to prepare the meeting for a closed session. Dr. Paris, can I, can I respectfully request that we do like a 2 minute bathroom break and get right on to things? Sure. Yeah. Is that fair for everybody? 2 minutes? <laughs> 